Now before we begin our examination of how to go about creating some CSS layout, what I want to speak to you about is the concept of fixed pixel layout. Now the first thing we're going to have to understand is that we are going to be creating an existing website that looks similar to the one that you're seeing in front of you and if you happen to have access to the source files that come with this video you should be able to download and you can take a look at these yourselves you can open them up and deconstruct how they were created however we're gonna arm or at least I'm gonna walk you through how to go about creating this from scratch so even if you don't have the source files that's not really a problem but nevertheless if you do you can take a look at them now one of the things you'll notice in the file that is provided the one that you're seeing right in front of you here is the fact that I happen to have a fixed amount of resolution that I'm working with. Now my computer screen here on my Mac is set to 1024 by 768. Now you'll notice that the website fits very nicely inside of that environment. In fact, there's a little bit of extra space left over so that things don't get too crowded out and if we scroll up and down you can see I've provided you with a lot of content in here so that it gives you a very realistic look that you would probably see if you have your own website and one of the things that you will notice is that at a full screen in the browser when I have this set to full screen if I were to move this slightly here I'll go back up to the top you can see that the entire containing element, the white area that I'm talking about here, is moving back and forth so that it's always in the center of the document. And that's because I'll be showing you how to create exactly that. But one of the things that I do want to draw your attention to is the fact that if I were to shrink this down a little bit more, you would notice that it what happens is it invokes the scroll bar, the horizontal scroll bar that we see here. And that would mean that in order to read this website, we would have to scroll back and forth. Now you might be wondering, oh geez, why would I want to have something looking like that? Well, the reason we work with fixed pixel layout is because the general populace works with a screen resolution that our dimensions will fit nicely inside of. Now I'll show you a website that we can go to to actually check out and see what the most popular screen resolutions are but for the moment just note that the dimensions that I'm giving you are going to fit in most people's browsers. Now so why do we work with a fixed pixel layout? Well the opposite of a fixed pixel layout, which I will also be showing you a little later on in this video, would be a liquid layout or something that's a little bit more malleable. What does that mean? It means when I shrink down the browser, the words will be wrapping and making the actual website get smaller. In a fixed pixel layout, the website is always this big and as you can see if we have a resolution higher than 1024 which I happen to be recording at then no problem all we'll see is more space and this fixed pixel amount right in the middle however if we did shrink this we saw that there's a scroll bar in a liquid base layout or something that's a little bit more malleable as I mentioned we would have the words wrapping now the only difficulties with a liquid base layout is that if I have an extremely large resolution the liquid base layout will stretch out to fit that resolution and that ends up with perhaps more words on one line than we would actually like you know when you have like you know, 40 words on one line that's not really conducive to good legibility however the other difficulty with liquid base layouts is that if I were to shrink this too much certainly we wouldn't get a scroll bar but you know you'd end up with like two or three words on one line but there are ways of controlling that with minimum and maximum width amounts and that's a good way to go but another reason why we work with fixed pixel layout although I'm not really using a lot of graphics in this particular layout in fact I'm not using any graphics it's all just text and typography based you can see that 
it would be a lot easier to design for a fixed pixel layout than it is for a liquid based layout. And since this particular video is aimed at beginners, we're going to stick with some beginner information um, to start with. So, having said all of that, let me also bring your attention to another area that is important. I want to draw your attention to this website, Net Market Share. And on Net Market Share, we can see important information like, you know, which people are using which browsers, which ones are the most popular ones that are out there. This is important for us as web developers as we need to be on top of this information and be able to see which browsers support what functionality. However, for our purposes, all I'm really interested in is the as you can see here I've already got screen resolutions so if you go to screen resolutions and it's right over here in the other section you'll notice that the complete market share as of the time of this particular recording May 2011 you'll notice that 20 percent of your audience is going to be using 1024 by 768 but the vast majority of your audience is also going to be using something that's larger than 1024. What does that mean for us? Well, it's not really a big deal if they're larger because we'll just see more of the background color of our website. So in other words, I'll see more of this gray as opposed to this. But the website itself will not change. However, do be aware that if we wanted to go smaller than 1024 in terms of our uh, fixed pixel amounts, we're really running into area where there's a very small portion of our audience. Less than 1% is actually still using um, 640 by 480. So we're not really concerned about that, and we haven't been for years with regards to fixed pixel layout. So nevertheless, as I wanted to show you, net market share is telling us that 1024 is a good portion of our audience. Now, if I had made my fixed pixel layout larger than 1024, what would end up happening is that on the vast majority of people who have that larger resolution they may be able to see this but remember 20 percent of your audience is at 1024 so that means 20 percent of your audience will have your website showing a scroll bar if you went for a fixed pixel layout larger than 1024. Now we don't want to alienate any amount of our audience and certainly we wouldn't want to alienate a large portion like 20 percent Imagine you were doing business and, uh, for example, there was a million dollars in sales on your website. That would be great. But if that was the case every month, let's say, if you alienated 20% of your audience, turn them off by having have them scroll left and right on the horizontal scroll bar, well, that's 20% of potential business going down the drain. And I don't know anybody who can you know, uh, quickly afford to lose 20% of their business. So that's why we're working with a 1024 layout. And that resolution is also something that has to sort of keep in mind the fact that our container area here, in other words, the white area that I'm pointing to, is actually not 1024. It's 960. And the reason it's 960 is because there's other elements in the real estate that is on my resolution screen. So for example, I have menu items. Um, if I weren't hiding my dock, my dock would be taking up some space. I also have scroll bar on the left and the right hand side and that eats up a bunch of space. So we oftentimes will work with a 960 pixel amount for the container and that way it'll fit quite nicely inside of a 1024 environment and 1024 screen resolution. So that's a little bit about fixed pixel layout and hopefully it's enough to get you started with understanding why we're working with this fixed pixel amount and we'll see as I said earlier we'll see some examples of a liquid based layout later on I'll show you how to convert your fixed pixel to a liquid based layout if that's something that you're interested in and would like to do. So we'll see more of that. But in the next video, we're going to get started by jumping into our HTML and coding it so that we're ready for our CSS layout.